Sure, OK. So I guess we had some introduction of the workshop in the last hour, I would say. But uh, for now, I'm just going to go through the material that I provided uh, as, a, as a video. But for those who haven't watched it, I can just go through them briefly. And then we can have some QA session for it. And then we'll start actually doing the coding part. So uh, OK, I have to do it maybe in 10 minutes then. It's going to be like a brief. OK, this workshop is for a, a modern, I would say, uh, anomaly anomaly detection. The definition is, uh, as you have seen, when you have something weird, something not expected, we can call it anomaly. It can be in different uh, places, but with different names, out of distribution, rare event, novelty, odd layers. It can be uh, just global. It can be. And, and, I, and I can outlayer just by its own, or it can be just based on the context because the context is not matching the, the, the sample, then you're saying that maybe it's fraud. And then you said that, okay, uh, the two important part is like uh, is different and is rare. Uh, that's so you're saying that something is anomaly. There are lots of applications for it, like intrusion detection, fraud detection, medical, healthcare, uh, sensor, fake news, and even if, if you just want to clean your data to just uh, have a better data set, training data set for your model. So if you want to have a better, just if you want to, if you just want to do supervised learning, but you want to have a better, more clean data, you can just use this technique. So it's not just about fraud detection, it can be just for cleaning. Uh, but there are lots of other, as I said, application for it. It can be, it can be applied on image, text, signal, and lots of application as well. And because we are here in Oceans, I want to say it again that one of the things that we are doing in Oceans is actually fraud detection for, for uh, insurance health, uh, for, for healthcare insurance companies, which means we are getting lots of data and then we are trying to help them save lots of billions of dollars that they are losing each year. And for, for that, we are dealing with like a super complex hierarchical data that if you want to be able to handle those data, you need uh, lots of sophisticated, modern, and modern uh, animal detection. And that's why, that was one of the main reasons that I ended up doing this workshop here. So there are lots of examples of it. Uh, it can be, as I said, you can, you can just use image, signal, and for different applications, autonomous driving and all those things, you can just use it. The other reason, I, I like this slide actually, just that's why I want to talk about it briefly here as well. The point of this slide was, Anomaly detection is not something that we just discovered in the last few years. Anomaly detection was part of the human. It's like we are always, we have an anomaly detection in your brain. It's like, there's a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. And the, the whole thing is saying that is like in your brain, we have two systems of thinking, system one, system two. And system one is the one that maybe handling habit, all the thing that is fast. like. You have seen that you have driving to your home. You're not think you're not. Then you're saying that oh, you're you're already there without knowing how did you get there. Or maybe you're just playing guitar or something. You're not thinking about it, but you're playing the music. So it's like it, then it's become part of your maybe instinct, part of your system one, which is like one of the things that brain can learn and can just do it fast. But the problem is maybe same thing as machine learning nowadays is like you're training a model getting the data, we are doing the prediction. We are not thinking about it that much because it's all based on some data that we have seen before. That's why your brain has some, some mechanism called, like, maybe you can call it like an anomaly detection, which means, let's say you're just driving home and you're not thinking about it, suddenly something is different. Maybe someone walking the street, there is a new, I don't know, some incident is happening, suddenly system one telling your system two that uh -uh, something is happening. Uh, system do should should take over, should actually think, should pay attention, and should do something about it. So even our brain has like two systems, and to be able to have these two systems, you need a connection. In machine learning, all those supervised models, I would say, can be like a system one. And we need system two, which would be mainly all those reasoning, planning, all those models that we have, that like even attention in, in, in machine learning is something that instead of just Using the input, maybe based on the context, based on the input, you're putting attention in different places. But the thing is, maybe even machine learning should have two systems. One that, given the data, doing the prediction, 
And then if something is wrong about it, if, if something is weird about it, then we need more attention. Maybe we should do something about it. That's why I was like, animal detection can be seen as a connection between system two, one and system two in, in, in brain or even in machine learning. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, the, in the kind of tutorial here, I said that we have three kind of uh, animal detection, supervised, semi-supervised, and unsupervised. Supervised is when you have a label. Semi-supervised is you don't have label, but you know whatever you have is normal. And unsupervised is when you, know, when you don't know that much about your data. So data is not that clean. You have anomaly in it. And you can't just rely on the data that you have and say that if something is different from it, it's is, is, is not normal. So that's the three category of, uh, of the animal detection that they are using in different places. And we will kind of try to use this uh, three category in different places here as well to say it. Because the problem with supervised one is you need label. And even to have the label is super hard because you have to find those labels. You need people to find those labels for you. And uh, the other thing is, even you do, you, there is no way that you can cover all the labels. Because the, one of the names for animal is novelty. It means something that you haven't seen or covered before at all. It's something new. So that's why we, in this workshop, we'll mainly talk about semi-supervised and unsupervised one. Because they, there's no need for the label. And, uh, is, is more applicable in different scenarios. Uh, the other thing is for, for, for the sake of this workshop, I said we're going to cover statistical, classical, and deep learning model. In this session, we'll mainly talk about the statistical model. In the second session, we'll talk about classical machine learning model. And for the third one, we'll mainly talk about deep learning based models. So it's going to be like a three different uh, session. And for deep learning one, which is going to be the last session and going to be maybe the more uh, novel technique is like uh, it can be mainly the deep, gen deep generative models, uh, the GAMS, uh, sequential model like RNN, autoencoder, uh, self-supervised learning, and all those techniques. We're going to overview them, and then we'll try to see how can we use all these techniques uh, to find something different, so some fine outlayer in your data. For the statistical model, uh, in the video we talked, we said that there are different ways that you can handle it. It can be parametric, it can be non-parametric. Uh, for 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 a non-parametric, can be just finding the standard deviation of your data, and then you can say that if a sample is three times uh, away from your mean based on the standard deviation, maybe that that sample is is off. Maybe that's fraud. And we say that you can that's for univariate data. It's going to move fast because it might be, I'm hoping that you all have seen this video. <laughs> so just using, just by fitting a Gaussian model, you might be able to just find the anomaly. Uh, and if that is a bit more complex, we can use GMM. Uh, if, if you have like two uh, peaks in your data, then or three, or, or then you can just basically use GMM and find a distribution of a data. So these are like generative model, not deep one, but is a, those generative models try to learn the distribution of data. And then once you learn the distribution of the data, based on the likelihood, you can say, OK, that the new sample, the likelihood of a new sample is super low. That's why you can say that's fraud. We will try to see that and cover that in the, in, in the, in the hands-on experience part. And then I say that you can just, just use box plot based on some metrics. You can just find it. And then, uh, then you can see that what's the relation between these two. And if you want to see that in more detail, all this thing, you can rewatch the video or watch the video. Uh, there's a histogram based uh, models, <laughs> uh, which basically saying that instead of trying to learn the distribution of data, you can just use the histogram of data and treat it as a as as a maybe learning of the distribution, which is like this is one of the non-parametric models. And then by just learning the histogram of the data, you can say that okay, that's kind of my distribution of a data. And then if something is off, if we can treat the, the frequency as a likelihood, and then you can say if something, the frequency of something is super low, maybe that thing is weird. That thing is novel. Or that item is something that I haven't seen before. So and then if you have even, if your data has multiple dimension, uh, that HBOS algorithm will, will kind of treat them uh, independently from each other, so it's not. It's just trying to find a histogram pair, pair, uh, 
dimension and then try to multiply them and say what's say what is a kind of like a probability of uh, of that sample just based on the histogram of it. And this one, this one, it can be there are there are algorithms that just using the distance of each sample to each other to find the anomaly. One of the first one is a canyon, and the other one is like a local or layer factor, which is a localized version of the canyon. Most of them are using the distance metric. Uh, so the canyon's one just, the definition is, once you have a sample, you can copy, compute the distance of that sample uh, to its k nearest neighbor. Then you can use maybe the average of them, or you can just say which one is the farthest from, 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 this, from, from my sample, and then you can use that distance as a metric. And then for that, you need a threshold and say that, okay, if the distance is more than a threshold, a predefined threshold, then maybe that sample is, like a, is, a, is an isolated sample somewhere, kind of uh, far, from other sample, far from other samples. So that's why maybe it's fraud or maybe it's anomaly. And the last one was a local clear factor, which is like a localized version of Canon, which means it's not just saying that each item is independent from each other and, and just finding the isolated one is just saying that is using the ratio, using the using is using comparison, just saying that if that sample, that point is as sparse compared to its neighbor, then that point can be fraud. So we kind of talk about it in the in the uh, in the in the video as well. Here is a something that I uh, described, but I want to talk about it a bit further, is the data set. Uh, here I just mentioned a bunch of data sets, like a synthetic data, MNIST, credit card fraud, uh, and other data, uh, other, uh, there are lots of other data that we can use in this series session. Uh, today, we will cover mostly the synthetic data, the credit card fraud data set, and we have MNIST that I will ask you guys to work with it. The thing is, with industry data, synthetic, I use, I'm going to use synthetic data mainly because I'm just using, uh, making a two-dimensional data so it's visible, we can actually see what we are finding. And then for the credit card fraud, because, because it's actually a real data set, we can see how these algorithms are performing on a real benchmark data set. For MNIST, is like an image, so we can see if you have like a simple data set for image like MNIST, if you remove one of the class, like let's say number seven or number five from it, and if you learn the distribution of the rest of the data, can, can you say if that number seven is anomaly from that moment or not? And the other thing is like, I kind of, I'm trying to have this workshop open, as I said before, is like, if you are interested in, in maybe uh, image data or signal processing data or any kind of data, you can actually add it to the workshop and then we can actually use it and we can see what is the performance of all these models uh, for that data. So, so that's why it's not like a fixed data set. My idea was at the end of the workshop, one of the things that we wanna learn is what, like we wanna learn lots of algorithm and for, so, for sure we'll learn lots of data set as well. But the thing is we wanna learn why some of these algorithms are better than the other and in which scenario you should use which data set. Like, should you always use GAN because it's fancy? Or maybe just, maybe isolation for us is better? Or why is this one is better than the other? So, and we can see that in, in real, we can, that's why I said we can use synthetic data, image data, signal data, and then we can see what is the pros and cons of all these models. Not just by me saying that, but you actually using it. So, this is like a brief, sorry, okay, this is a brief, hopefully brief, overview of the, uh, this presentation. Now it's going to be QA. Any question? So of, of, of the simple algorithms that you mentioned, uh, is there any algorithm that can detect uh, abnormal collective behavior or collective outlier? For example, uh, denial of service attack. Uh, we will, okay. I haven't add that data set uh, here, but we can use one of those algorithms as well, one of those data sets as well to see if we can find them or not. Like those, are, those uh, type of anomalies, like is not just. It means that a sample is not anomaly by itself. 
it's kind of similar to the contextual as well that I just said. It's like based on the other behavior of the data, based on some of the collect collection of samples that is happening, like in network, someone getting getting access to the system and then doing something and then doing something and then doing something different. And based on some of the some of the sample that you're getting, you're saying that okay, it no is suspicious. Uh, I haven't had that kind of data set, but for sure we can add them and then we can see if these algorithm that you're going to talk about are capable of actually finding those fraud or not. So, so my concern was that none of them is capable, at least in the, the, the way I understand them, the way the data is uh, straightforwardly presented, maybe after some transformations they can. Yeah, usually, okay, even for signal or even for image, based on algorithm, uh, sometime, okay, for a classical model, like uh, even like Canyon that we want to see today, or for uh, let's say one SVM, which is like a try, try to learn the boundary around or that or all those models, for sure you have to learn some feature from it. That's why that's why I call it like a classical machine learning model. It means you have to learn the feature that you think is important. So like when you're talking about let's say signal, instead of using the signal as is you can maybe extract some feature from it. Maybe it can be if you have, a, you can have some metrics from your signal that you think is important. Maybe if you're talking about a stock, you can have some other metrics in your mind that you can say that, okay, if the price is more than the last 200 days of that stock, maybe that's, that's maybe a sign. So based on the application and the context, you will try to extract more feature and then you can just use those feature. Or, you can just rely on the model itself. That's why it's like a, maybe deep learning was all about it, which means instead of a human doing feature engineering, you are letting uh, deep models to do, to do it for you. It means if you actually, that's why I put RNN as one of the deep learning model. It means when you have sequential data, you can just le let the model to learn the distribution of the, your data. It means like language modeling. is like a sequential, sequence of word a sentence can be outlayer, can be weird in lots of way. Not just because you have one word in, in, in the sentence that is weird, maybe the grammar is weird. So it's, it's like maybe, maybe you can say collection of word happens together, that's why it makes that sentence to be not correct. How can you find it? How can you learn it? it maybe one of the tasks, one of the way that you can do that is like, you can say if you have enough correct sentence, which make it to be semi-supervised model, then you can learn all those sentences by maybe RNN, which we can call it like, semi, like a, a self-supervised model. It means like language modeling, the only thing that language modeling is trying to do is given a word, you want to predict the next word, and then you want to predict the next word. Given, then, then you can compute the probability of the sentence. And then once you learn the probability of the sentence, you can say if that, mod, that sentence is meaningful or not. Uh, so then, if you have, then you should say, if you have enough data, those model, those uh, generative model should be able to learn the distribution of your data. And from that moment, you have a model that can tell the difference, maybe, uh, maybe from, from normal one and not normal one. Can I add something? Uh, I think for the type of problems that you're mentioning, uh, one common uh, way to deal with it is graphical models. Uh, and come to the next workshop because that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, <laughs> good advert. <laughs> Seriously, that's like the next workshop is, is machine learning cybersecurity, and the type of problem that you mentioned is, you know, very, very common here. Yep. And then, so would you draw a distinction between? Anomaly detection method with a clustering method. Uh, one of the things that you're gonna cover, maybe you can get back, is actually clustering. Uh, where was it? Uh, here, unsupervised model. So distance space and clustering. Uh, in next session, I will, I will give, I will show you some simple not maybe classical or different way of way, different way of you 
OK, how should I say that? Anything before deep learning <laughs> is like, there are lots of ways that you can do that. It can be like a, a one class classification, like one, one, like one uh, SVM. It can be based on uh, ensemble model, like they call it like uh, isolation forest. Or it can be just based on clustering, as, as you mentioned. We will do a clustering model, and the idea in clustering is, is exactly find, is kind of like a, dist is similar to the distance based model, which means here, like in that picture, you can say that, okay, if you have lots of data, if you can do something as simple as k-means, and then you can say, if you have any cluster, that a number of items in that cluster is less than a threshold that you should define, then you can say all those items maybe are what layer. So yes, clustering is one of the techniques that you are using, and we'll actually use next week. More question. Any question? I'm just reading the question online. Okay. Y'all good? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so so clustering will be unsupervised, right? Yes. So then then in supervised uh, realm for anomaly detection, then you would would you just specify one class for it or you so you only then you just look at oh like the anomalies or like the not really counted in the supervised training. You're talking about the su supervised or semi supervised? The the sup I don't know like so the supervised you have a label. It means you someone has already labeled the data. So you have maybe two class of data. Is like anomaly or not anomaly. So you have two class. In semi supervised, you have just one class. So it means you know whatever you have is normal. That's why you want to learn the distribution of it. And in unsupervised, as you even mentioned, the like clustering, you have both of them. That's why you need techniques that can kind of tell the difference between the normal and not normal mm -hmm. in your training data. So that's why, for me, like a clustering is a way of doing that in an unsupervised way. Mm 